Great, welcome. Um, so this is going to be an optimal consumption bundle example question. Uh, it's taken from Krugman Wells Microeconomics Second Edition, Chapter Ten, which is the Rational Consumer Chapter, Question Four. Uh, and this is actually building on the previous problem, um, and I'll link to that previous problem in this video so that you can see it if you haven't seen that already. Um, okay, so Brenda, um, the consumer in problem three, which I linked to, now has to make a decision about how many bagels and how much coffee to have for breakfast. So she has $8 of income to spend on bagels and coffee, and then use the information given in table three to answer the following questions. And I'll give that table in a second. So for part A, um, A, bagels cost $2 each and coffee cost uh, $2 per cup. Uh, which, bundle, which bundles are on Brenda's budget line? Uh, for each of these bundles, calculate the level of utility in utils, you know, our arbitrary kind of made up metric for utility, utils, that Brenda enjoys. Which bundle is her optimal bundle? So here's our table. Um, in the first column, we have quantity of bagels. You can see 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3. Uh, in this column, you have quantity of coffee. And then over here, you have the corresponding utility for each of these kind of consumption bundles. So with zero bagels, zero cups of coffee, this Brenda person has uh, zero total utility, utils. If Brenda were to eat four bagels and two cups of coffee, then the total utility in utils would be 66. And then all the other combinations here. So like one bagel, three cups of coffee leads to uh, 54 utils. So we're told that um, bagels cost two bucks, and then we're told that coffee costs two bucks. So we're going to go through here um, and have a dollar amount associated with each of these things. Um, so with zero bagels, then the cost is going to be zero dollars. Um, with one bagel, the cost is going to be two bucks. Uh, with two bagels, the cost is going to be four dollars. And then with three bagels, the cost is going to be six dollars, obviously. Um, and then four bagels is going to cost eight dollars to consume that. Uh, you know, four bagels, each bagel costs two bucks. The total cost is going to be eight dollars. And then you do a similar thing for all of the uh, cups of coffee. Each cup of coffee is just um, two dollars. So two cups of coffee is going to be four dollars. Four cups of coffee is going to be eight dollars. Two, three, four. Three will be six. Cool. And then I added another column, and it's going to be total cost. So it's the total cost of zero bagels and zero cups of coffee. That's zero dollars. The total cost of zero bagels and two cups of coffee is going to be four dollars. Uh, and then we're just going to go through all of these here. Um, total cost of one bagel and two cups of coffee is six dollars. One bagel and three cups of coffee is going to be eight dollars. Uh, two cups, two bagels, and zero cups of coffee is going to be two bu four bucks. Two bagels, two cups of coffee is going to be eight bucks. Three bagels and one cup of coffee is going to be eight bucks. Three bagels and two cups of coffee is going to be ten bucks. Great. Okay, so. Uh, First thing is, which of these bundles are on Brenda's budget line? So the, the bundles that are on Brenda's budget line are going to be those that sum up to $8. She has $8 to spend, uh, and to maximize her utility, she's going to spend all of her $8. So she's not going to spend anything less than $8. So let's block out all of those. Anything less than $8 um, is a not maximized utility. So we blocked out all those. And then she only has $8 to spend, so she can't do any consumption bundle that's more expensive than $8. So we're going to delete all of the ones that are more costly than $8. So that just leaves these guys right here.
Okay, good for us. So these are all of the consumption bundles that lie on Brenda's budget line. Um, and then for each of these, you know, we have the total level of utility right here that's given to us. Um, so the question then is, well, what the optimal bundle? The optimal bundle is the one that maximizes Brenda's utility. So which one of these bundles is maximizing her utility? Uh, and the answer is going to be 56, since 56 is the highest. And 56 total utilities is associated with two bagels and two cups of coffee. So Brenda's going to maximize her utility by buying two bagels, two cups of coffee, giving her a total utility of 56. Part B asks, or gives us that the price of bagels increases to $4. So it used to be $2, it doubled, now the price of bagels is $4. Um, but the price of coffee remains the same at $2 per cup. Which bundles are now in Brenda's budget line? Uh, remember, she has $8 to spend. And then for each bundle, calculate Brenda's total level of utility and utils, uh, and which bundle is her optimal. Uh, so let's go back to the table that we're given from problem three. So here's the table. So let's do another total cost. Um, so obviously zero bagels and two cups of coffee is going to be zero dollars. Um, zero bagels and two cups of coffee is going to be four dollars. Zero bagels and four cups of coffee is going to be eight dollars. And then one bagel, one bagel is four dollars plus two cups of coffee, four dollars. So this is going to be eight dollars. One bagel, four dollars plus three cups of coffee, six dollars is going to be ten dollars. Uh, and then I'm just going to fill in these going down the line now. Okay, so these are the total cost of these bundles. For, for example, you know, $20 is associated with four bagels, each bagel costing $4. So this is going to cost 16 bucks. And then two cups of coffee, each coffee costing two bucks, gives the total cost for this bundle 20 bucks. Okay, so now we have to go through these um, and we're going to find the ones that are on Brenda's budget constraint. Uh, and she has $8 to spend, so she's not going to spend less than eight dollars because that will uh, not maximize her utility. Um, you know, uh, at for every all of these combinations above the ones where she spends less than eight dollars, she's going to get some higher utility. So let's delete all the ones where she spends less than eight bucks, and then all the bundles that are cost more than eight dollars are just out of her price range. So she's not going to get any of those. And now we're left with just three bundles left. And then which of these three are we going to do? So she could either buy four cups of coffee, cost eight bucks, 40 utils, total utility. She get one bagel, two cups of coffee, cost eight dollars, uh, a total utility of 48, or two bagels, that's cost, and zero cups of coffee, once again cost eight bucks, total utility of 28. So the one that maximizes her utility is two cups of coffee, sorry, one bagel, two cups of coffee um, with 48 utils. Cool, so moving on to part C. Uh, what do your answers in part A and B imply about the slope of Brenda's demand curve for bagels? Describe a situation, the substitution effect and the income effect of this increase in the price of bagels, assuming that bagels are a normal good. Cool, so uh, the slope of Brenda's demand curve for bagels, um, since, the price, uh, since as the price of bagels goes up, the demand for bagels goes down, which we learned in, in B, uh, this implies that Brenda's demand curve for bagels is downward sloping, kind of like the one you see here. At high prices, you have a low quantity demanded. At a low price, you have a high quantity demanded of bagels. Um, if bagels are a normal good, then as income rises, we expect the demand for bagels to decrease. Um, the other type of good is an inferior good, like spam or something, uh, where the lower, where with lower incomes, uh, lower incomes are associated with like higher demand for inferior goods. So, okay, this is a normal good, not an inferior good. Um, so Brenda's demand curve is downward sloping for two reasons. The first is the substitution effect. Um, as the price of bagels increases, bagels become relatively less attractive. 
So Brenda is likely to switch away from bagels into uh, coffee. So this is the substitution effect. The income effect, um, as the price of as the price of bagels in increases, uh, that's equivalent to Brenda being uh, a bit more poorer. So her money, eight dollars. Uh, you know, as bagels is more expensive, her eight dollars now buys fewer goods than it did before. So her purchasing power has been reduced. Um, since bagels are you know normal goods, uh, meaning as one's income goes down, their spending on a good decreases too. Uh, this is consistent with what we see with Brenda's demand for bagels. This is the income effect. Uh, the income effect, you know, usually is not particularly big for most goods and services. The caveat is that if that is, if the spending on those goods and services takes up a big part of one's income. So here's an example, this bagel example with Brenda. This is an example of bagels take up a large part of Brenda's breakfast consumption. Uh, you'll notice that with the increase in bagel prices, she doesn't really substitute from uh, bagels into coffee. You know, before she had, uh, when bagels were $2, coffee was $2. She bought two bagels, two coffees. When the price of bagel goes up, she just reduces her consumption of bagels. So she doesn't substitute her reduced bagel consumption into coffee. She simply just reduces her total consumption for bagels. So income effect. Cool. Uh, hopefully that was helpful. Um, thanks and have a good day. Bye.